if you are a girl and you want to play, or if you're a guy, if you want to cheer, come up to the top and be cool. Uh, tomorrow is Lumberjack Day, so that means we're flannel. Um, and for everyone who's bringing pancake stuff, please bring it. Um, hopefully by today at Miss Williston's, uh, kind of like the science area. And for everybody else, there will be free pancakes in the quad during lunch tomorrow. And also if you dress up today, so up at the field we're going to be taking pictures for class points. So be there and be there for your photos. Um, Friday will be red and black day, so just wear anything that has red and black on it for school spirit. And then reminder for announcements, make sure you're like standing here and you're talking loud enough so the camera can hear you so our fun folks at home can hear you as well. Um, and just for people who are going to be making announcements, um, next break, so C Day, we're going to be having two sophomore speeches, so please try and keep your announcements kind of short. All right. I will try to keep my announcements short. Um, I debated about whether to start with the sad thing or the fun stuff, so I'm starting with the sad thing. Uh, many of you know Lizzie Stanton, uh, New York School's second uh, female Quenmeister. Um, I'm sorry to tell you that her mother died last Wednesday. There will be a memorial service for, for the, the mom on Friday at 3 o'clock at the Naval Post Graduate School. I know that makes it a little tough for those of you who are in, in school. You can't really get out of school in order to go. But I did want to let you know in case some of you had freeze or were planning to go. Um, and I'm also aware that many of you know this already. If you are planning to go, could you please let me know so that I can let her dad know because we have to be escorted onto the grounds of the Naval Postgraduate School. So thanks. Um, I'll help to coordinate that. Uh, very quickly, I also wanted to tell you <clears throat> that because I couldn't remember the poll numbers last week, I forgot to write them down. Here they are. Last week's poll was how much do you work compared? How much do you think you work compared to your uh, schoolmates? 29% of you said you work the same. 27% of you said you work somewhat less, and 22% of you said you worked somewhat harder. The other numbers were smaller. Interesting. And then this past week, two parts. Uh, which three values are most important to you? The top three were kindness, in this order, kindness, hard work, and fairness. Here's where it gets really interesting. Um, what were the top three values you think your schoolmates value? The top three, in this order, popularity. <laughs> Hard work and physical attractiveness. <laughs> and just, just so that you know, the other ones, some of the other ones listed for yourselves were compassion, caring, grades, honesty, being genuine, dedication, friendliness, fairness, kindness, and resistance. Uh, resilience, intelligence, humor, and the ever popular, I value all things, even those I despise. I love a paradox. Okay, and your schoolmates, uh, the others in here were money, intelligence, friendliness, grades, everything. <laughs> yesterday to go on our field trip on Friday. Please get it in before lunch today. And there's a bin in the front office for that. Eighth graders and seniors going on the Authors and Ideas Festival uh, Student Day. Um, we will meet at the school vans at 8.30 on Friday morning. We will come back during lunch, so bring a, you won't be able to go to the lunch truck, so make sure you bring a lunch with you to school that day, and bring it along in the van. You might have to eat it in the car, in the van, on the way back to school. So see you seniors and eighth graders on Friday morning at the vans. Thanks. Uh, it's my pleasure to add to the announcement I made last week. Uh, about uh, the results of the National Merit Scholarship Qualifying Test, last year's PSAT for the seniors. Uh, as I told you then, there are several categories that recognize uh, 
the, your performance on that test, uh, and perhaps to a certain extent, hard work. I'm not sure about popularity, money, or good looks. Uh, although this is a particularly good looking group. Uh, these are the commended students in the class of 2015, so National Merit Scholarship commended students. If you'd uh, hold your applause till the whole list is read, and if the nine of you, would you uh, after break, would meet outside here, we'd like to take your picture. <laughs> All right, ready? The uh, National Merit commended students are Yu Ching Kao, Austin Deman, Matthew Ganellis, Riley Gaucher, Nina Lorenz, Umar Moen, Melissa Newman, Victoria Peet, and Daniel Urquidez. This afternoon is an early release day. That means that the library will be closed so that the faculty can have a faculty meeting in the library. We give you the early release time so that you can take care of some things for yourselves. But you are welcome to be on campus participating obviously in athletics or any other activities that you would like to participate in. Uh, secondly, on Friday we have a special guest, Matthew Claudel, a recent uh, York alumnus who went on to study architecture and design at Princeton and is now a member of the... Matthew. Claudel is a proud graduate of Yale. Pardon Not me. <laughs> 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 you, you're fine. <laughs> Matthew Ganellis, who was the pre just from this announcement, Matthew Ganellis, <laughs> Matthew Claudel, not Matthew Ganellis, was the president of the class of 2009. And he is going to come and talk about design and come on back. But he was the Souter Prize winner at Yale uh, during his senior year there. And I'm going to have the opportunity to introduce him in a public forum. And I'm, you won't get to see this, but I've got a great picture of him as an eighth grader. And a great picture of him with makeup on. And also a great picture of him receiving the award at Yale. So come on back. <laughs> I stand corrected, my apologies. Uh, Matthew is currently a member of the MIT Media Lab. The MIT Media Lab is a very interesting organization at MIT that is unconventional. They like to say that they have a culture that is anti-disciplinary. That means that they are interdisciplinary. And currently they are working on things such as wearable technologies, stackable driverless cars, and sustainable cities and Matthew will be hosting a conversation in room eight during health and fitness. You are excused from health and fitness, just let your health and fitness instructor know. He will be visiting some classes and he'll also be in Pathways talking about his experiences at an Ivy League program such as Yale. <laughs> Okay, this is the last one of the, the last A day prior to our fall break. Uh, so, what that means is uh, when we come back and we meet again, thanks. When we meet again, we're going to have just a couple of days before fall fair. So, uh, what we have to, what you guys do, can do is not too early to start thinking about how you're going to set up your booths and what you're going to have to purchase, and make sure that everybody's on the same page. The folks that are cleaning up and helping you out. Um, today, when the student council meets, we're going to formalize where the booths will be, and then we'll put them up on the walls, uh, on the, bill, bill, or the bulletin boards around campus, so you can kind of see where you'll be. If you have questions about that, you can ask. That should be like by Friday. Um, so it's down, down to the wire. I know we've been really kind of ahead of the curve on this, but given the position of fall break, it's really important that uh, you guys Get ready, because when we, when we come back, it's going to be upon us. Thanks. I have a killer instinct. I discovered this when I was with my synchronized swimming team this past July in Seattle for our national age group competition. This was our first, this is my first national meet, so I was an eager newbie. 
According to the veterans, it was tradition for all of the girls to cram into one hotel room the last night before returning home. After late night chatting and intense card games, we all fell asleep. Or so I thought. I was out cold after an exhausting day of competing when one of the girls shook me awake. Catherine is sick, wake up, she yelled. After stumbling around for ibuprofen from my bag in my half-conscious state, I brought the medicine to Catherine, whom I found in tears in the bathroom surrounded by the rest of my team. Just as I reached out to comfort her, one of the girls flicked the lights into a creepy strobe rhythm while another pair slammed the door shut. In a split second, sweaty bodies surrounded me, and one girl tried to pull a white hotel pillowcase over my head. They were trying to capture me. Before she could even get it over my ponytail, I instinctively shoved her off, bulldozed the others over, and angrily threw open the door. How was I doing this in my groggy state? I stomped to my empty bed and pulled the still slightly warm sheets over my head. But I couldn't rest in peace quite yet because the girls haven't given up on their mischievous little plan. Two of them pinned me down to the bed while trying to attempt that same, get that same darn pillowcase over my head again. No way were they going to lay another finger on me. I violently squirmed, frantically wiggled, and ceaselessly scratched underneath their solid grip until I had to knock them off with a few colossal punches and one considerably massive kick. <laughs> of their bodies hitting the ground, hushed the room. They all sheepishly climbed onto the beds and exchanged mortified glances because their scheme had miserably failed. They didn't even consider that I might resist them. Who knew that Emily would fight back? What were you guys thinking, I exclaimed. They explained that they had planned my unofficial initiation to the team. Apparently, they each had suffered a similar experience, but unfortunately for them, their initiations, or hazings, had succeeded. Although they had been in my shoes before, they forgot what it was like to be the new girl. After I pointed this out, they all felt horrible. I knew they completely regretted what they did and didn't mean for it to get that out of hand, so I forgave them. Actually, I almost wanted to thank them. I believe that people show who they truly are in a crisis. I learned that I'm a fighter, and I know they learned never to underestimate Miss Emily Musto ever again. <laughs>